Well hello everybody, welcome to another unboxing, another vintage but supposedly new unused vacuum cleaner in a very 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 dirty and tatty box. Any of you who are regular viewers will have seen me un unwrapping this alongside another vintage vacuum, a Hoover Aquamaster. So, as promised, here I am to do the full unboxing. I'm crossing my fingers, I'm crossing my legs, I'm saying a little prayer that inside here, despite the poor packaging, we've got a perfect vacuum cleaner. We can but hope. But it is very mucky this box. Now on first viewing at least the machine itself is wrapped up in some perspex. And what on earth is that? Ah oh, right. Mm. Right, I think I'll angle the camera so we can see what I'm taking out of the box. Right, so this is what's greeted me. Now, well, it seems to have a nice metallic finish. It's a very unusual way to have packaged this, and whether this is how it came from the factory, I'm not sure. It looks like it is. I'll just take the cleaner out. And under the cleaner, we have a box with the cleaning tools in. So despite the box being very, very tatty, the machine inside does seem to be okay. It doesn't have, like when I unboxed the AEG, there was no packaging like this. It was more or less looked like it had been thrown in the box. So here we have it. Oh, there is a plug on. That's very, <laughs> very odd the way they've done that though. It's hard for you to see possibly. What? It says instructions for connecting mains lead to the plug, but it's got a plug. And I assume this is how it's, this is how it must have come from the factory because it's very odd. The plug end Oh, and it's an MK plug as well. That's put into the hose inlet of the vacuum. There's some protective, um, sort of, I don't know what it is, some protective stuff um, underneath the wire to protect the finish of the vacuum. So I'm assuming that this, again, it smells very musty. This is how it would have been packed at the factory. I'll put that to one side. Seems okay initially, and we will have a look. These tools, the seal has been broken. That's a nice, nice cleaning head. Right, we'll start with mm, extension tube, which, poof, once it's had some metal polish on, it'll be all right, but looking inside, it looks like it's gone a bit rusty. You won't be able to really see, I don't think. You can't really tell, can you? Well, I can see that, but it looks okay. And it's got, unusually for Bosch, you didn't know Bosch did this, but it has looked like it's got a pip fitting. That's very reminiscent of the Hoover cleaners. Little bit of a cobweb. Nothing that uh, a damp cloth won't sort out. It's quite a long handle. No suction relief valve on this. Swivels. And this end, again it swivels, the hose swivels that way, but it also looks like it's a 360 degree swivel top as well. It's quite a nice seal on that as well. So when it's connected to the machine, it shouldn't leak any suction. I've got a little button there that releases it. 
Now I do like the look of this. Now this cleaning head is nicely sealed, so we'll open that up. That's an all plastic affair, unfortunately, by the looks. Bosch Silence Duo. It's a quite a nice looking device. Again, you know, it's light, but unfortunately it does have a plastic sole plate, but that's a very big, deep suction channel there. But obviously, duo, it must mean carpets and hard floors, but there's, it's no, no brushes down for carpets, uh, for hard floors, sorry. Got two big wheels. Obviously, Bosch intend you to use this on both carpets and hard floors. It's actually got six wheels. Two little ones at the front, two there at the back, and then two larger ones. You've got your thread pickers, and you've got these little squeegee bits at the back. So, this is supposed to be used for hard floors as well. And as you can see, there's a shape there, look, uh, just at the end. That's where the tube goes in. Oops, it's all a bit stiff, I won't push it in, but obviously it pushes down and twists to lock into place. It all needs a good polish up. Right, got a spare bag. Not, not huge capacity. Warranty details from Cornhill Insurance. Is there any date on this? Well, it costs, if I want to extend the guarantee for a vacuum cleaner, it will cost me £10 to... Oh, that's cheap. No, level for level two, our £10 will give me an additional four-year parts guarantee. And for £32, I can have a comprehensive four-year parts and labour extended guarantee. Um, and it was printed... 1st of December 1994, so it puts this vacuum in the mid 90s. Here's an order form for some dust bags for the Optima Starlight Alpha Maxima Activa, Activa Perfecta Compacta, and that's that, no date on that. Here's the instruction book. Instructions for use. Oh, it's one of those, is it? I don't like these. It's one of those instructions that has all the illustrations at the back. But all the written text somewhere. Here it is. Here's the English. So I'll be looking at that later. So that's all the tools. Now let's have a look at the vacuum. Now it is all sealed. So that is good. So this is how it would have been packed in the factory. So hopefully because it's got all this extra packaging on it should have survived in storage. And it's, it's just, isn't that funny, it's the same colour and finish as the Hoover Telios caress I've got. It's that metallic finish and if that metallic finish runs through the whole of the machine then it's obviously embedded. A little bit of a that'll buff out. It's obviously never been out of the box. Ooh. Needs a bit of oil. And it's got a power there's a power takeoff socket there but I wouldn't have thought I could get a a thing for it. Now, how on earth this plug seems to be well rammed in. <laughs> that is very awkward. How on earth have they got that in there? So I move that out of the way. Got electronic control. No sort of, oh, there's a couple of lights on there, see what they mean. But 
this is absolutely rammed in. Instructions for connecting mains lead. Yeah, well, can you give me the instructions for getting this plug out? I can't even open... You see, does that bit open first? I don't know how to get into the bag compartment. Oh, it's here. This, so this doesn't move. Let me just pull out the flex a bit more. You see, it's got a thing here. A little... I don't know what you'd call that. But that, when you rewind the flex, just stops the plug from bashing into the machine. But this is ridiculous. Oh, phew. not as difficult as I thought. So that needs a bit of a polish up. But look at that, it's an MK plug. Very good plugs are MK plugs. And they do away with a cord grip. I don't know if you can just about see. A regular plug would have two screws here and a flat sort of cord grip. The MKs is an ingenious design. You just had to push the cord into it when you were changing a plug. And the more you tugged on a plug, the tighter it got. So this type of plug, the MK safety plug, was my plug of choice when I had to fit my own plugs. Maybe not necessarily this particular style, but I always liked the MK design. And on a vacuum cleaner where the the cord when it goes into the plug can get tugged from time to time it is always good to get um, one of these obviously they're all molded on now so you don't have that problem so I can now remove this protective piece and have a look at the vacuum which apart from a tiny little blemish on there which I can't blame the seller for because that would have been there beforehand. It seems okay. I think it might need a bit of an oiling. It's a Perfecta 83. And I believe inside here should be some cleaning tools. Oh, <laughs> see uh, Should that come off? <laughs> well, it's not broken. Anyway, I'll. Uh, oh, what's that bit of plastic there? I don't think it means anything. Anyway, here's the three little cleaning tools. No dusting brush as such. Short and stubbly little crevice tool. You've got your all-purpose nozzle with your thread pickers. And did it go in there? It went that way, didn't it? That's it. And then the brush here, which obviously slides onto the all-purpose nozzle. Similar to the way, I suppose, oh, it doesn't slide on, does it just clip on? I think it clips in place. Not sure which way. Anyway, that goes on somehow, doesn't it? I think it clips, there it is. Clips in place there. So it's, but it's fairly soft, you could use that for dusting, I suppose. It doesn't have a round dusting brush. No, that way. Let's hope I can get the panel on. And yes, like I thought, it is completely embedded, this metallic finish. I don't know if you can quite catch that on camera. It's a green colour with an embedded metallic speckle. It's got 96, January 96 on this part. So this particular part was made in January 96. But the cleaner could have been made later, but not earlier. Anyway, that, that's gone back on. Well, oh, that's unusual too. Here we've got the dust bag. Self-sealing as I took it out, it's sealed up. It also has this, it says sanitised on it, another sort of filter medium, what well, comes out. Now that's, that's like, if you look back at my videos, I did one on a Karsh, a Karsh cylinder. The bag for that sat in a sort of filter box like that. Whether you can wash that, time will tell. I'll have to check the instructions. But if you can't wash that, that's probably be quite a pricey item to replace because the filter is actually stuck on to this basket. But behind there, we've got another filter, which will slide up. It might be charcoal. It says micro san on it. And there's a black there's a black filter medium inside, so and it's quite thick. So I expect for the time that this was 
in the shops, the filtration, we've been quite good. Sorry about this, the sun's just come out. What a shocker. Just trying to get the motor. Yeah, the motor's fine. I don't know if you can quite see it. It's very hard to get the angle, but I can just see it in, in there. And it's all shiny, shiny and bright. So I don't think any moisture, because it was all wrapped up, I don't think any moisture's managed to get into this cleaner. So that's, that's good. Let's pop the filter basket, that's what I'm calling it, back in. Pop the... Oh, now we see, now I've pulled that out. Eek! Oh, it's hard to get, oh, I should be able to do it. I'll have to go online to check about availability of bags for this, I would assume. Oh, bosh, don't do this to me. I might. Oh no, hang on. Can I get it from this way? Don't think I can. Um... I'll just, I'll just cut it. I'll just cut it. I know. I'm impatient. I'm not bothered if it doesn't seal itself. Bang it in there. Now. Oh, I'll have to trim it up a bit more. Anyway, that bag is supposed to seal itself. There we go, it's not gonna seal itself. Also, it's got another fail safe. Again, it's pretty standard. On here, this bag collar moves. And obviously, I cannot close the bag door until I've put the bag back correctly. And that should be in. That's it. So now I should be able to close. That's it. So is there any exhaust filter? There does seem to be, yes. It's a little foamy filter. Again, I, I'm not sure if any of these are washable. They didn't tend to, uh, tend to be washable for cleaners of this era. They were replaceable. This is before bagless took over and people were expected to replace filters and things. Not Probably not that many people did, but uh, the motor is under here. But again, it's sealed up in some more insulation. So maybe quiet, I'm not sure. Don't know how noisy this machine's going to be. But being a German made machine and a Bosch, I don't think it will be noisy. Wouldn't it be great if these lit up, I don't think they're going to light up, but it wouldn't be fantastic. Now there is a light here, that's obviously a bag check or blockage indicator light, and a green light, which I'm assuming is a mains on indicator. Right then, put the hose on and plug it in, and we'll see if this Bosch vacuum cleaner works as it should. One thing I've noticed as I was pulling out the cord, a nice little detail here, is around where the cord exits and enters the machine this bit here where you'd get often some wear when you're pulling out cords i've seen vacuum cleaners with auto cord rewinds that because the cord has been pulled out so often the plastic surrounding the cord inlet you can see where it's worn down but on this bosch model this is typical thinking of german german engineering it's actually got a metal loop put around there which shouldn't wear away after constant use. Also on the back I'll just show you you've got your parking bracket again it's a fairly standard feature that's so we can park the main nozzle at the end there look there's also one on the back I'll show you the back in a minute I forgot to show you the back of the machine so here we have the control panel, so we've got motor speed control ranging from 300 up to 1400. So it would be okay to be sold now with the new regulations in the UK and Europe, EU countries anyway. It is under 1600 watts. Again apologising for the sun, <laughs> because it makes things a bit more awkward to see. Right, I don't think it's going to light up anyway, I can tell it's not, but anyway let's see what it's like.
Now, I'm not really sure what this green light is supposed to do because it doesn't seem to do anything. The green light there. As you can see, when I blocked off the hose, the bag check light came on. But nothing seemed to happen with this green light. So I'll check the instructions to see what that is, but I would have assumed that that green light is a mains on light to tell me it's plugged in. But it's not very bright. No, it doesn't work. If that's faulty, I'm not bothered. But um, I'll have to see what that is all about. Before I go, I'll just have a look at the back of the machine. So here's the back of the clean. It's fairly heavy, really. You've got your swivel front caster, your two wheels. Not very smooth running, but Maybe a little bit of lubrication will help those. And you've got this parking bracket. Seems a bit odd. There's a little spring in there. So let me just reach over the instructions because I did try putting this nozzle in and well, it doesn't really go in very well. So I'm not sure. Let's check, see if there's a picture. And I think it, I think it tilts outwards actually that somehow. I'm not sure. It does move somehow, I believe. Let's have a quick, quick shufty. If we can find the English. English, here we are, floor nozzle. Silence duo. Yes, the, the nozzle is supposed to be for hard floors and carpets. Appliance with automatic function. This doesn't have the automatic function. Bosch call it Ecomatic. This probably dates from around the time that AEG that I unboxed. It's probably that sort of um, time period, mid 90s. So there is an Electro Duo brush available, Fig 27. Oh, I've gone looking at Fig 27, but it's not showing the brush. Oh, is that the brush? Fig 38. Oh, no, here it is. Fig. That looks a good brush. I don't suppose I can get one of those anymore. There we go. That's an electro brush. Anyway, I can't see how he's supposed to put this on, but it is supposed to fit in there. But that's, I don't know. Not really sure. I'll have to study the instructions a bit more carefully at my leisure. Finally, before I go, we will have a look at the rating plate there. I can't read it myself at the moment because it's upside down in my viewfinder. But I can read it now. It's a Robert Bosch Haus can't speak that. G G M B H. Don't know if we can date it from this. E E N R B B S eight three four. No that's not that's not a serial number. Made in Germany. This could be a serial number, 03760123. But all in all, it's not the model I, I won in the auction, but this is basically, I believe, the seller has sent me this as a replacement for the AEG. I'm not said about returning the AEG, so I assume they don't want it back. I will check with them. It's no use to them really. I will probably fix it up if I can get the wheels and, and a new switch for it. But this, apart from needing a little bit of a polish up, is fine. So I'm quite happy with that. The Bosch Perfector 86. And yes, I've just realised, unlike all the newer Boshes I've seen, this hose is a reasonable length. You know, there's some good Bosch machines that I'd like to try, but I've just been put off by the very short hose. I'm not sure. It's not as long as some, but it's, it's adequate, I suppose. So, while it's nice and sunny, I'll leave you with this. The Bosch Perfecto 83. Naturally, I will uh, possibly do a, a fuller review on this. We'll have to see. 
but obviously there will be more unboxings on my channel and more reviews to come. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.